Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review chi-squared tests. By the end of this video, you'll be able to conduct a one-tailed hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit. Please print the corresponding handout for this video, and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes on the handout. By now you've learned to calculate at least six different statistical tests. For z-tests, t-tests, and ANOVA, the data consisted of interval or ratio variables in order to compare sample means. For correlation, the data also consisted of interval and ratio variables to compare the relationship between those variables. Now, what happens if we don't have interval or ratio variables, but we have nominal variables instead. That's where chi-square tests come in, because they allow for the study of nominal variables, or data that consists of frequencies. One specific type of test is called the chi-square for goodness of fit. This test is used to determine how well the data fits the hypothesis. This video will explain how researchers can do that. This diagram illustrates the process of hypothesis testing. We will use the same four steps in conducting a hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit, well, with some modifications along the way. Step one, the yellow Lego is to state hypotheses. This step will be modified because we're determining whether a preference or difference exists between the groups. The key words here are preference or difference because they relate back to one of the two null hypotheses that a chi-square for goodness of fit can have. The null hypothesis is determined first in order to calculate the chi-square. Thus, the null hypothesis has already been stated in the chi-square calculations. We will only report the null hypothesis in notation there will be no written sentence for it. For the research hypothesis, we are predicting that there will be a preference or a difference for one or more of the groups that we're studying. We will only report the research hypothesis in a sentence. There will be no statistical notation for it. The star here is to remind students that the wording and statistical notation are significantly modified for a hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit. Step two, the blue Lego, is to set the criteria to make a decision whether the study worked or not. This step has modifications because we're testing data that consists of nominal variables. Recall that a nominal variable is a variable with a name. In other words, the variables have categories that consist of names, but with no numerical order. First, we will set our significance level P, as we did for our previous hypothesis tests. Second, we'll have our first modification. We need to calculate degrees of freedom with a new formula. Recall that the typical formula for degrees of freedom is df equals n minus 1. Since we're comparing nominal variables that consist of categories with names, the new formula will be n categories minus 1. In this case, n categories refers to the number of categories that are in the study. Third, we still need to find the critical region. However, the critical region is now a chi-square value, and we need to use a new table called the chi-square distribution table. If you think back to the chi-square formula for goodness of fit that you learned in the Nearpod lesson, you might remember the formula requires that you square values. Squaring a negative number always results in a positive number. Therefore, the chi-square value will always be positive. For the critical region then, it will also be positive, or positively skewed, that is, and will always be a one-tailed test. The stars here are to remind students of these two modifications. Let's review what this new table looks like. The chi-square distribution table is organized with the column for df and columns for significance levels. Since chi-squared is 
always positively skewed, there are no options for a two-tailed test because it'll always be one-tailed. There are common mistakes that students can make while reading this table. This is an example to practice reading the table. First, we'll find the degrees of freedom. Second, we will find the significance level. Third, we will find the answer where these two columns meet. The critical region will be different for each hypothesis test because it's based on the number of categories in the study. The number one mistake students make is writing a critical region of plus or minus chi-square when it just cannot be. Step 3, the red Lego is to collect data and calculate sample statistics. This step requires calculation of the chi-square for goodness of fit, which you learned in the Nearpod lesson. Step four, the green Lego, is making a decision about whether the study worked or not. Guess what? This step stays the same. In this test, we are using chi-square instead. Now that we have reviewed the steps of hypothesis test with a chi-square for goodness of fit, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. This is a short summary of the four steps that we described above. Please note that these steps are for a one-tailed hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit. Modifications for this test are noted in bold. Please pause the video to write down these steps on the video handout. This lecture example wants to explore whether there's a preference for a particular brand of toilet paper. The details of this research study are also provided in your video handout. The chi-square for goodness of fit for this example was calculated in the Nearpod lesson. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to do the four steps on your own first. Then resume the video to show the answers. Step one. According to the research question, we'll be using a null hypothesis of no preference. Thus, the wording should reflect the word preference. The null hypothesis was already stated in notation when the chi-square was calculated in the Nearpod lesson. There is no written sentence for the null hypothesis. The research hypothesis in a written sentence will indicate that there will be a preference for one or more brands of toilet paper. It is important to be specific and clearly state one or more brands, the number of categories being studied, and the names of those categories. There is no notation for the research hypothesis. Step 2. As a researcher, we get to decide the significance level, and the preferred one is 0 0.05. In a hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit, the first modification is to use a new formula for degrees of freedom. Using this new formula, the degrees of freedom is 3. Since the chi-square value will always be positively skewed, we need to draw a critical region chi-square for only one tail above the mean. The corresponding chi-square value for a 0.05 significance level one-tailed is chi-square of plus 7.815. The box indicates the final answer that I'll be looking for on problem sets and exams. Because the chi-square table provides values to three decimal places, you may, you may keep the answer to three decimal places. Step 3. The chi-square for goodness of fit for this example was already calculated in an earlier video, which resulted in a chi-square of plus 63.03. The box indicates the final answer for this step. Step 4. Now we need to compare the sample chi-square that we calculated in step 3 to the prediction which we determined in step 2. In other words, does our chi-square fall in the critical region from step 2? The answer is a big fat yes then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. The box indicates the final answer that I'll be looking for on problem sets and exams. More specifically, the preference for one or more brands of toilet paper is statistically significant. 
After a hypothesis test is conducted, the researcher must report and interpret the results of the study. For the purpose of this class, we will not calculate effect size for chi-square for goodness of fit. Finally, let's practice those summary and interpretation statements. There are two items that will be new to the summary statement. First, since we're calculating chi-square, and chi-square does not have any sample means, we do not need to write the first sentence of a summary statement like we usually would have, would have for a t-test. Now we will only have one sentence for the summary statement. The second change is because chi-square is studying how well the data fits the hypothesis. We need to report the sample size that the data is based on. N will be placed next to the degrees of freedom in the summary statement. We will continue to report degrees of freedom and use chi-square instead. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to write the statements on your own first. Then resume the video to show the answers. The summary statement will now consist of only one sentence. This sentence will, will report the chi-square score, degrees of freedom, the sample size n, which is included in the parentheses, significance level used, and the decision you made. The interpretation statement will consist of only two sentences since we did not calculate effect size. The first two sentences will actually come from the initial interpretation that you determined after calculating the chi-square for goodness of fit in the Nearpod lesson. So basically, your interpretation statement is pretty much done. The first sentence will explain the preference, and the second sentence will be more specific and explain which brand is most preferred. In summary, the majority of statistical tests use data that consists of interval and ratio variables. When data consists of nominal variables, or data that consists of frequencies, chi-square tests are used instead. This data can be then tested using a hypothesis test to determine if the preference or difference in the proportions predicted is statistically significant or not. Learning how to conduct a hypothesis test with chi-square for goodness of fit is one more major Lego building block needed to understand statistics.